ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to London. It's March and that's what I'm going to share with you. A little of life here in town this month. First up, it's snowing. So I thought we'd take a look at London in the snow. First up, Buckingham Palace. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this little look at London in the snow. I'm going to go and sit next to a fire and pour out and I'll see you guys a little later in the month when hopefully it's a little warmer. Trafalgar Square, 
St. Patrick's Day is during March, so each Sunday following St. Patrick's Day itself there's a huge celebration of all things Irish here in London, Trafalgar Square. Check it out. St. Patrick's Day is on the 17th of March. It marks the day the primary patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick, died, and it is an annual cultural and religious celebration of all things Irish. I've travelled all over Ireland from the very north to the very south and it's an amazing and beautiful country. The one thing I know about the Irish is they know how to party and St Patrick's Day here in London is no exception. There is a parade and this event here in Trafalgar Square. I've been to many events here but none of them have been on a day this cold. It's freezing. Yet the atmosphere is phenomenal, everyone is dancing and the energy is incredible. Celebrations over there in Trafalgar Square are phenomenal. It's so cold though, it started snowing, but everyone seems to be keeping themselves warm with uh, dancing and drinking, plenty of both. I'm gonna go and warm up in one of London's renowned Irish pubs, just around the corner in Covent Garden, and uh, somewhere you can get a uh, little taste of Ireland here in London all year round. Let's go. Okay, just here on Maiden Lane in Covent Garden is the Porterhouse pub. It's huge. Okay, the Porterhouse might be the largest bar in London, but it doesn't feel that way. Split up over 12 different levels, the Porterhouse in Covent Garden can be as big or as intimate as you want it to be. You can let the fast pace of London pass you by as you sit and sample some of the finest stout brewed in the world. They brew their own beer and stout and it's award winning. So obsessed with the beer that they don't simply brew under license and claim Irish roots, they actually hand craft the beer in Dublin, load it onto a ship, wave goodbye and wait anxiously for its arrival here in London, making the Porterhouse a phenomenal Irish bar with genuine Irish beers. They serve fine food and when it gets a little bit later in the evening you can pop down to the basement bar and enjoy some of London's best live music. But the Porterhouse is not just a fantastic beer bar because they also have some fantastic wines on offer. There is nowhere better to hide while your better half is busy browsing the very many shops of Covent Garden. Okay, Porterhouse is an amazing bar. However, if you're after the world famous black stuff, Guinness, take you to a, uh, another bar where they serve that just around the corner and along the road. Let's go.
snow is coming down pretty heavy now. We're here. Welcome to Waxy O'Connor's decorated for St. Patrick's Day with balloons. Waxy O'Connor's is another phenomenal Irish bar here in London and it's enormous. When you first walk into Waxy O'Connor's, the first bar you come into is like a regular pub. And then you walk through this entranceway at the back of the first bar and you descend into this cavernous space. It's like a different world. Four bars split over six different levels. Many evenings they have live music, they serve phenomenal food and drink and you can get a pint of Guinness here. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little look at St Patrick's Day here in London as much as I have. We're going to head home now, so I'll see you guys a little later in the month. Okay, I've just come to Notting Hill. It's the end of the month, the end of March. And this winter has felt extra long and extra cold. Still snowing in the middle of March. Snowed on the St. Patrick's Day party. But spring has finally sprung. Now, when you think of spring here in England, you're probably thinking of clear blue skies with fluffy white clouds, sunshine beaming down on daffodils and ducklings but after the winter we've just had it's early days yet so light grey skies is better than dark grey skies and the weather being a little bit warmer you no longer have to dress like you're going on a polar expedition just to get to work or go to the shops something I like to do in the warmer months is which I haven't done for a while is come to one of London's many parks especially at weekends on a Sunday which it is today it's a great they're great places to uh, relax escape the hustle and bustle of city life and get ready for the week ahead so today i've come to kensington gardens i'm going to head down to the italian gardens you get great views down along the lake from there and then i'm going to head around the lake to the princess diana memorial fountain and last time i was here there was a cycle hire bay next to the princess's memorial it's still there and there are bikes i'll get a bike and ride down rotten road to Hyde Park Corner. When I say ride, I mean cycle down the cycle path next to the bridleway. If not, you're walking. So first of all, head down to the Italian Gardens. I'm not the only one who enjoys the park on a weekend. Okay, these are the Italian gardens in Kensington Gardens. Fountains, swans, and amazing views of the lake.
just a snooty. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. He was incredible. <laughs> He stands there like What did you call him? Mr. Mr. Snooty. <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> he is snooty. He does look it, yes. <laughs> okay, Kensington Gardens and Hyde Park are right next to each other. When you're in them at times, it's hard to spot where one ends and the other begins. But this is that point. One of the uh, entrances and exits between Kensington Gardens and Hyde Park. <coughs> okay, welcome to Hyde Park. Okay, just here next to the lake in Hyde Park is the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain. Okay, the car park next to the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain has been resurfaced so the uh, cycle hire bay is no longer there. Um, found one in another part of the park just by the Albert Memorial which is behind me. I got myself a bike and uh, let's head back over to the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain to Rotten Row. I'm going to take a ride down the cycle path next to the bridleway. Okay, luckily this road's closed. It's the first time I've been on a bike this year, I think. Okay, this behind me is Rotten Row. The sandy part is a bridle way for people with horses to exercise their horses. There's a cycle path beside it, runs all the way from here down to Hyde Park Corner. It's one of my favorite spots to go for a bike ride. Riding on the London roads can be challenging at times. I've done my fair share just to commute to work on a pedal bike. I had motorbikes for years, um, so from that, bay where I got this bike um, by the Albert Memorial. Um, I haven't actually been um, on the road with the open road with cars yet. Um, the road in front of the memorial was closed and then there's a cycle path um, all the way through Hyde Park to Rotten Rush. So um, yeah, I'm going to ride all the way down to Hyde Park Corner.
I made it to the end of uh, Rotten Row, one of my uh, favourite bike rides in town. Um, there's a bike bay um, right here um, at the end by Higher Parkour. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at life here in London during the month of March. The end of winter and the beginning of spring. So, until next time, toodles.